Hey guys, welcome back. So we are going to continue on with our uh, part two here of our video series on the control systems. And now we're going to switch gears. We're going to move over to the Mike's Train House MTH side of things and we're going to talk about those control systems. So just a couple of quick notes before we get started. Just remember, we're going to strictly talk about the MTH systems right now. We're not going to talk about, in the beginning of this video, anything to do with interacting or inter... Uh, twining those systems with the Lionel systems, uh, we're just talking to talk about MTH. So kind of think that Lionel doesn't even exist at this point. There's only one manufacturer MTH out there, and we're going to talk about the different control systems that they have. Now, I only have one of their control systems, although we'll show you all of the different ones. And on the MTH side, it's actually a much more straightforward uh, sort of chronological uh, progression of systems than on the Lionel side, which sort of changed around for all kinds of different reasons. So, uh, yeah, so that's what we're going to do in this part two. And then at the end of this, we're going to talk about briefly the two manufacturers' main systems and how they sort of interact with each other. And then finally, we're going to talk about the engines. We're going to flip the view and we're going to talk about how the engines actually can be the deciding factor in what you can and cannot do with any of these systems. So we got a lot to cover just like the other video so we might as well just jump right into it and uh, get started. So let's do this. Alright guys, so just like before we're going to start at the beginning. Uh, so just like Lionel, uh, MTH has conventional engines. Engines that don't have any electronics in them. And no command systems or anything like that. So if you're just running conventional engines, whether it's an MTH conventional engine or an original post-war Lionel engine or whatever it is, you can use uh, MTH's main transformer, which is this one you see right here, which is the Z4000. So the Z4000 is a cool transformer because it has, uh, you know, 400 watts of power. It's got two handles to control two tracks, and it's got some outputs on the back for uh, fixed outputs for accessories and things like that. It has a digital display, it gives you some whistle and horn buttons, and of course direction buttons and things like that. So pretty standard like any other conventional transformer. And if you had that transformer, um, any of the MTH conventional engines you can control, just like you did before where you're varying the track voltage, right? It has nothing to do with the engine, uh, you're just moving the voltage up and down on the track and it behaves just like any... Uh, AC motor would by speeding up or slowing down, right? And that's pretty much it. So same thing as before on the Lionel side if you're just doing conventional. All right, so our next evolution uh, in control systems was called the Z4000 Remote. And if you kind of think back of when we were talking about the first TMCC system from Lionel, the Cab 1, I told you that you could control your conventional engines with a remote control if you wanted to. And that's kind of what this does also. So the purpose of this was if you were a conventional only operator and that's all you were controlling, you could buy this extra remote package and add it onto that Z4000 transformer we were just looking at. It just plugs right in and you can now control the Z4000 transformer walking around the room with a remote control. So now you don't have to actually be sitting at the transformer using the handles. You can use the, the remote to do exactly the same thing. This was a 900 megahertz remote. So again, sometimes you can have communication issues if you have anything else in your house running on that frequency and it wasn't changeable, it was set to that frequency. So that's one thing to keep in mind. But what was nice about it is it had an LCD screen on it that you could select the, uh, you could see the, um, excuse me, the tracks of voltage output. Um, it uh, allowed you to control both sides of the transformer. So you can see it has track one, track two slider right here. So that would go with like handle one, handle two. Um, it has all the basic buttons that the transformer has on it, you know, whistle, horn, direction, you know, bell, and then it has a um, little uh, uh, thumb wheel here to increase, decrease your voltage. Had an actual something a little extra, the boost brake, which you know, allows you to brake or boost the uh, voltage going to the track. 
and then it had an emergency panic shutdown that would shut everything down if something went wrong. Um, the other feature it had on it is that you could use this single remote with up to three uh, Z4000 transformers. So let's say you had six uh, separate loops that you're running conventional trains on. You could have uh, three Z4000s, because remember each one can only handle two individual loops. And there's a little uh, slider down here that lets you select which uh, Z4000 you wanted to control, and then of course which handle on that Z4000 you wanted to control. And that was pretty much it. It was basically a way that you could control remotely your conventional engines. And that would be any engine, right? Whether it's a Lionel conventional engine or MTH conventional engine, any basically any manufacturer's engine where you were adjusting the voltage up and down on the track. And that was as simple as it was. That's that's all it did. Didn't do any more of that. Um, and so you could control all your conventionals. Of course, you can control Proto Sound 2 and 3 locomotives since they run in conventional mode also, which we'll talk about a little bit later when we get to that point. But anything that you would want to vary the track voltage on up and down, this was uh, a tool that you could use to control it remotely instead of buying a more advanced system. So again, when we're talking about what should you buy, it really depends on what you're running on your railroad, right? Now, if you're a strictly conventional person and you don't care about the command and electronics and all those fancy stuff, guess what? This would work if you had a Z4000 transformer, you get a nice little remote and you don't need anything else. It's all sort of integrated together. If you're using a Lionel system, like we talked about before, then you know you would probably get the Cab 1 uh, system and then a Power Master to go with it, and you would do the same thing with that. So again, both manufacturers are capable of kind of doing the same thing. MTH just did it a little different way. And they do have a little, you know, a couple of little nice extra features on this remote here, plus the fact that you can actually use multiple transformers if you wanted to. And that's all the Z4000 remote was. All right, so let's talk about uh, another uh, handheld remote that you could buy. Now, this hand re handheld remote was really meant for the ready-to-run sets. So just like Lionel has those ready-to-run sets, they're like a complete kit in one, something you'd buy for a kid at Christmas, MTH has the same types of sets. They're a little bit different, though. In their sets, the way they worked it was you, what you see here is you would have a power supply pack, a brick, that would plug into the wall and that would plug into this little controller which was kind of like your transformer control where you're adjusting the track voltage up and down you have bell whistle and direction control so just like the z4000 only sort of separated out into these little units and again it was it was for the ready to run set so you wouldn't need a big z4000 if you don't have a big uh you know layout and railroad and it's just a christmas tree type of set that you're you know setting up every year or something like that so the ready to run sets came with these power supplies and that was all manual just like it would be with the Z4000 where you had to actually move the little dial and you were sort of stuck in one position. But they also came out with a little accessory you could add on to this. So you could also buy if you wanted to what they call the Rail King IR remote, so infrared remote. And you can see if you look at it, it's very simple, right? It has the bell, the whistle or horn, direction, emergency stop, and just a, a toggle that lets you increase or decrease the voltage to the track. And all that occurred was uh, the power supply that you just saw before would plug directly into this, and then this plugs into the track here if you have real tracks, and then this just does an a, a infrared connection to that receiver and that's what controls the you know voltage on your track so again we're still in conventional mode and um, the thing about this was again it was really meant for ready to run sets you know it had a very short range only about 15 feet and uh, it was really designed just to be used for these Z5000 or Z750 power bricks and that's pretty much it um, now, it did have one little extra feature on it, which was Protocast and Proto Dispatch, which we'll talk about when we get to the big uh, MTH DCS system. But those features basically allow you to either play recorded music through your engine or speak through it 
with your own voice, right? So it did have that little extra feature on it if you got this remote. And there's two little, like, uh, basically audio jacks right here on the back of the, the unit where you could plug things in. So that was one of the little things that it did have uh, that uh, you wouldn't necessarily have on your Z4000. So it gave you a little control. It was fun for kids and things like that. I want you to look very closely at this remote though because there's another one coming up that looks very similar to it and if you're at a train show and you're not familiar with all these remotes you may think you're buying the one and you're actually buying the other one and this is um, there's a big difference between the two as this one is only for conventional control like you see right here. The other thing to keep in mind for these MTH IR remotes are they do have a known issue with them if you are running them under fluorescent lighting. Because they are an infrared, which means it uses a beam and not radio frequency to communicate between the remote and the receiver, um, it, it's a pretty well-known issue that under certain fluorescent lighting, it doesn't, it doesn't see the signal. Um, I'm not sure if it's because of whatever the light wave color it's using, but um, you can get erratic operation or sometimes it won't work at all because of where it's located on your layout or on the floor or wherever you are and the overhead lighting that happens. So if you're in a basement with fluorescent lighting, sometimes you can have issues with them depending where it's located and you may just need to move the receiver around to a different spot. Uh, so it, maybe it's not directly under a fluorescent light or something. So keep that in mind because these do have issues with fluorescent lighting, pretty well documented and known. Um, not like they don't work, it's just that uh, that light wave uh, interferes with it sometime. And again, moving it around sometimes just resolves that issue. There's no fix for it or anything, it's just the way they were designed uh, for the color range that they use for their infrared uh, signal. So just keep that in mind also before you jump on uh, one of these, especially if you have that problem when you get one home and you can't figure out why it's doing it, um, that's the reason for it. So just FYI on that. All right, so our next uh, control system is called the DCS Remote Commander. And this is the one I was talking about that looks very similar to the other one. Now, unless you pay close attention to the buttons that are on there, and you can see there's different buttons than were on the other one. Uh, if you're at a show, and again, you're not familiar, you might accidentally pick up the wrong one of what you're after. So, what is this one? So, this was another solution uh, so that you could actually run your digital control system engines um, at a lower cost here. So in other words, instead of buying the full-blown DCS system, which again, we will be coming to in a few minutes, you could buy the DCS Remote Commander, okay? So again, it was another wireless solution uh, that you could get most of the popular command control functions that Protosound uh, locomotives had. Uh, and they have dedicated, there's nine dedicated engine function buttons on the remote. You don't have any extra special function keys or codes or stuff like you do on the full DCS system, but you can access all the basic stuff like whistle, horn, bell, smoke, direction, speed, um, passenger, freight sounds, start up and shut down, couplers, you know, front and rear couplers and everything. So again, if you're just getting into DCS, and you don't want to spend the money on the full system, which we're going to talk about why it's so, um, the current system that's out there and the future system coming. Uh, and you'll, I think once we get to those, uh, you'll understand what I'm talking about. But if you didn't want to spend all that money or you just wanted to get your feet wet with the DCS system, the DCS Remote Commander is actually a good uh, option. And it's a, it's a lot cheaper to be able to access these systems in the secondary market and grab one of these up and then just play with your DCS engines and kind of get it get a feel for them and, and what you can do with them okay this one's very simple it had a jack on the back here to plug in your brick uh, for whatever power supply you're using and then these two went out to the track and then the remote of course just connected with it now this is another infrared uh, remote so again keep that in mind uh, what I talked about before with the um, fluorescent lighting, but other than that, uh, kind of works the same way, only it's dedicated to the DCS, uh, some of the main DCS functions. And it can go, uh, the other thing about the, one, oh, one thing I've got to mention about these MTH system is 
they can actually, most of them can all accept any power input AC or DC power and um, you know everything still works so depending uh, what your power supply is uh, that is one little thing that's nice and flexible about the MTH side of the house so and this could accept up to 20 volts which is more than enough for anything that we would need uh, for um, pretty much uh, all our engines that are out there remember the command stuff is pretty much 18 volts max that you want on the track so um, yeah, but that's pretty much it. So this is a very, again, a very simple uh, remote control system that you can get into very cheaply if you wanted to sort of play with some DCS stuff with your DCS engines um, and uh, use it that way to remotely control them um, without spending a fortune on a DCS system. All right, so let's talk about the next control system that came out. This is a Wi-Fi based system and it was called the DCS Explorer Wi-Fi Track Interface Unit. And so this is sort of a little uh, a step up from the little remote we just saw before that only had those nine dedicated functions on it. Uh, but what this was for was again, if you're just getting your feet wet into DCS and you don't want to buy the full system, this gave you access to some DCS features, some of the main ones, on any Proto 2 or 3 locomotive. So I've said Proto Sound and Proto 2 and a couple things a couple times now. Let's just quick talk about it. So Proto 1 uh, are basically conventional engines that have uh, some, some have sound, some don't. It just depends on the generation it was made in. But uh, when you say Proto 1, you're really talking about conventional engines. Okay. But some do have some cool sounds in them too, in addition to just being conventional. Proto Sound 2 and Proto Sound 3 engines are command control engines. Those are the ones with the uh, advanced electronics in them that you can do all kinds of stuff with, like we were talking about with the Lionel uh, legacy systems and, and things like that. So it's kind of that comparison. So uh, that confused me in the beginning when I first got into MTH because I was you know, Proto Sound 1, I didn't know what the difference between that and 2 and 3 was, and that's it. The, really, the only difference between Proto Sound 2 and 3 are the sort of configuration of the electronic boards inside and the fact that Proto Sound 3 engines do not require a rechargeable battery inside them. Um, like the Proto Sound 2s do, uh, the Proto Sound 3s have capacitors that store that charge, and the Proto Sound 2s needed a rechargeable battery that came from MTH. Now, those batteries, I just want to make one little comment on the batteries in Proto Sound 2 engines. Uh, they're some of the best batteries out there that uh, you could get uh, that came from the factory uh, from MTH. First of all, I want to dispel a myth that I've seen all over the place. Uh, that you shouldn't use the batteries, you should replace them with a what they call a BCR, which is basically, a, it plugs in like a battery, but it's a capacitor. Um, and let me just say one thing about the batteries. First of all, they last a, a long, long time. I've got engines, ProtoSound 2 engines, that have the original battery in them from 15 years ago, and they still work fine. They still charge up and do exactly what they're supposed to. But the myth is that uh, you should replace it with a BCR because the battery will leak and damage your electronics. And it's, it's untrue. Uh, MTH batteries from the factory, not, not replacement Duracells or anything, I'm talking about the actual MTH batteries that came with the engine are dry batteries. That's the way they design them. So they're not wet batteries and they can't leak all over the place. And they will last a long, long time. So. You can either, if you want to, spend $20 or $25 or $30 on a VCR to replace it. But if the battery's working just fine, I leave them in there until they don't keep a charge anymore. And then if you bought another one from MTH, uh, they would probably last another 15 plus years again. So just keep that in mind before you go crazy with all this uh, stuff that guys, you know, they get hooked on these things. Like you got to replace it with a VCR and all those things. And it's just not necessary sometimes. And it costs extra money for no reason. So um, there's nothing wrong with putting a BCR in it. But what's nice about the rechargeables is that you don't have to wait for the BCR to get its charge. It takes, you know, whatever, 10, 15 seconds for the BCR to, to actually get powered up. 
uh, whereas the batteries, if you run if you run them consistently, will always be charged and they're ready to go the second you put it on the track. So just keep that in mind. Um, but as far as the DCX Explorer unit goes, um, really what this was is to get access to DCS features through Wi-Fi. This does not have a physical remote that you hold in your hand. Instead, it uses the DCS app that you get off the App Store, whether it's Android or iOS. And when you get that app off the App Store, uh, I'll show you that in a minute, it is a, it's a cool little app and basically you have a remote in everybody's pocket, right? That you can run trains and um, that the app is a, this, the app when you first download it is a free app. It does have in-app purchases that you can add onto it to open up more features, but the basic app that you get for free uh, will allow you to control up to three Protosound 2 or later engines. So it's not as robust as the full DCS system, right? You, you only be able to control three simultaneously, but you can control three. Um, and it's very simple to set up. It's a Wi-Fi unit. Uh, you can have either using the DCS as the Wi-Fi or you can hook it up into your own uh, home network if you want to. There's a couple choices for that when you hook it up. And this, this really was a limited feature set and they really intended it to be used for uh, sort of the ready to run set customers or somebody who had maybe one or two Protosound 2 or 3 engines and they're just getting started into DCS and they don't want to dump a fortune into the main system yet until they're sure of what they want. So if you're one of those guys that loves uh, to control your trains remotely and you don't care about like the massive amount of extra features that they have in all these advanced systems like the legacy system and the, the full DCS system, you really just want the basics uh, and maybe one or two little extras, you, guess what? You don't necessarily have to buy that full-blown system. Something like this would work just as well the only difference with this uh, is that you cannot have a physical remote with it. This will only ever work because it's Wi-Fi. It's basically a Wi-Fi unit, and it'll only ever work with you know a phone or tablet basically to control it. So the tablet connects through through it through Wi-Fi, and then it sends the signals on the track out to the uh, Protosound two or three command engines, and that that's really all it works. Um, um, like, but like I said, you do get um, all the basic features, but any additional features that you want, you have to move up to the full-blown DCS Wi-Fi unit and DCS uh, TIU, the track interface unit. So basically the full-blown system. So even though the app has in-app purchases, if you actually actually purchase them, you wouldn't be able to do anything with them because they, they go with a different set of hardware. Uh, so don't don't get confused on that either thinking you're going to be able to buy the DCS Explorer and get full-blown DCS features and not have to buy the full-blown DCS system. It doesn't work that way. This will only go with the basic features uh, on the app and that's pretty much it. So, But again, you can get these uh, for pretty cheap, especially at train shows and stuff like that. And if you maybe you only have one DCS engine and um, you just want to test it out with seeing how it works with an app instead of a handheld remote to see if you even like running trains with apps this would be the way to go a cheap way to go you could buy it test it out um, if you don't like it and you want to move to the full system with a handheld remote and all that kind of stuff then uh, you know you can just uh, buy the full system and uh, either sell it or just put it aside. It's not that much money. You're not really losing that much, but you're, you're sort of playing with it and testing it out um, to find out if it's going to satisfy your needs. But this will actually satisfy a lot of people's needs who don't mind running their trains with uh, their phone or tablet. So, And that's all the DCS Explorer was. It's a Wi-Fi track interface unit. And um, I'm not sure if I mentioned this, but the power uh, would just be powered from a um, brick or transformer to the track, right? And again, because this is controlling the trains directly, then it would be, uh, this is attached to the track, sending the signals and then uh, controlling the, the engines. It's not uh, controlling the voltage on the track. The track would be set to the normal solid 18 volts for 
Protosound 2 or 3 engines. All right, the next system we're going to talk about is this thing called the DCS Commander. Now, I would recommend that if you're new to uh, all these systems, you stay away from this one. Um, there's really no reason for it. Um, and honestly, these actually still command a pretty good price, a couple hundred dollars. Uh, so, but what the DCS Commander was, was it was a static module that you can see right here. It just sat on your control panel or somewhere on your layout. And it was a way that you could uh, sort of access a lot of the command control functions in Protosound locomotives with very straightforward sort of hard-coded buttons and you didn't have to go under a bunch of menus or anything like that to get to these different things like if you wanted to do the reverse signal or forward signal or something like that right so they it had a lot of the main features and functions that you're going to see on the DCS system coming up but the one thing to keep in mind is that um, MTH engines can run on AC or DC voltage. So there's another system called DCC, which is a totally different system by a totally different um, manufacturer uh, for other types of trains. Like, you know, there's all kinds of trains that can run like HO and, and all different other manufacturers, which is a, a DC based system. And this commander basically, even though it can take any input as far as power goes, AC or DC, it actually outputs uh, an analog DC um, output out of it. So you got to keep that in mind because you would have to make sure that your engine, you know, was set correctly and then also that you can't run AC engines on this um, necessarily. That they may not work correctly. Uh, so because of that, I would stay away from this particular uh, control system okay but really what it was is you could insert this into any um, system that you had DCC running on and it would you know accept any input like I said output the DC uh, the analog DC and then um, you could switch between those different types of things so with simple button presses you could switch to DCS or conventional operation depending what you were doing um, and then um, it works with all Protosound 3 locomotives, but there is a caveat to the Protosound 2 locomotives, which is it will only work with 3 volt systems. So there is a, with Protosound engines, uh, Protosound 2, there were uh, the first generation were what they called 5 volt systems. So the boards were uh, 5 volt boards, um, and then they switched them to 3 volt boards before Protosound was dis Protosound 2 was discontinued and they moved to Protosound 3. So on Protosound 2 you have sort of two different versions. It doesn't affect the operation. There's no difference in the features and functionality. It's just the electronics inside the engine are operating on a 3 volt or a 5 volt board. And that makes a difference for this particular control. It will only work on the newer 3 volt boards and it will not work with the 5 volts. So that's another reason because of that weird idiosyncrasy you have to sort of keep track of. It'd be so much easier if uh, you kind of just ignore this system. But just so you know from a history standpoint this thing did exist. You might see it at train shows. And again it was just a big box that you put on your layout. And, you know, it had all the, the basic buttons for controlling your engine up and down. You could switch between conventional and DCS control. And um, you could also pass through uh, DCC's control. And it had speed adjustments. And, you know, you could do all things, sounds, lights, smokes, all that kind of stuff. Doppler sounds, um, accents, uh, passenger station and freight yard sounds. And um, it did have a limit, though. You could only control up to 10 uh, Protosound uh, 3 engines. So, you know, the main thing about it is you could choose between analog DC, DCC, and DCS modes, which the other ones um, that we talked about so far can't do. So that was its main, you know, probably advantage if you're running DCC with other manufacturers, train systems, and things like that it does allow you to sort of switch back and forth. But it's very specific. 
and you, you really have to know what engines you're running with it. Um, so again, if you're not familiar with it, you see it at a train show, just walk right by it. Uh, you, you're going to want one of the systems I just talked about, or you're going to want to go to the full blown, uh, DCS system, um, for your ProtoSound two and three engines. So, but we just want to mention it for history purposes. And also in case you see it and you're wondering, what is this one? And would this work for what I needed it to do? Guys, so we're finally at the latest and greatest um, MTH control system, and that's called the DCS Digital Command System. We've been saying that word a lot, but this is the full-blown DCS command system. And so what this system consists of is what they call a TIU, Track Interface Unit. And that would be kind of like the command base on the Lionel side when we did, you know, the base one or the base to the legacy base the thing that connects to the track basically and it's also the thing that the remote communicates with and the dcs system has a remote just like the lionel legacy and and tmcc's doing this is kind of what it looks like it's a totally different style remote with different buttons it has an lcd screen on it that also has displays that change based on engines and features and functions and things like that but this remote communicates uh, through an RF frequency to the TIU and so it basically sends commands to the TIU TIU sends commands out to the track and the engine if it has the appropriate electronics in it will respond to those commands just like the Lionel system does now as far as setting it up it's a little bit different has a little different concept on how it works compared to Lionel system and that has pluses and minuses to it, just like Lionel system has pluses and minuses to it also. Uh, but the basic concept is the same, and it controls, obviously, uh, MTH, ProtoSound, 1, 2, and 3 engines. Um, it does have some nice features on it, and uh, we'll talk about those. We're not going to get into the system in depth, because obviously that's not the point of this. The point of this video is to just to tell you this is another control system, and what, what would be a reason that you would buy this or what does it accomplish if you buy this full-blown system as opposed to the ones that we were just talking about. Quick note before we get into this, uh, if you are going to get into the full-blown DCS system, there is a book called the DCS uh, Companion Guide. Uh, it's now in its third edition. Uh, you can find this on, uh, if you browse MTH's website, or you can actually go on Amazon and get it. It's around $25, $26. And basically, what it is, is uh, a complete reference to everything DCS. So, if you want to know anything about DCS, it is in this book, including how to set up your uh, layout as far as wiring your track. Anything to do with DCS is in this book. And since the DCS system is technically right now uh, not being produced, um, then uh, there's nothing new that this book doesn't have in it. So you're going to get everything you need in this book. And this book is going to help you uh, just because the DCS system has a lot of stuff in to it. Um, if you want to use it uh, to really get into deep into the DCS system. So I would highly recommend this book since it's only like $25. Worth every single penny. It's actually worth more than that with all the information that's in it. Because anytime I had a question or couldn't figure something out, the answer has been inside this book. So keep that in mind. You might want to check this book out. All right, so the DCS system has, you know, all the same functionality that the Lionel system has, but they have some additional features that Lionel doesn't have and vice versa. So they're, they're a little bit different, uh, but all the basic stuff, I want to start my train up. I want to speed it up, slow it down, reverse it, blow the whistle, blow the horn, ring the bell, play the crew talk, or they call it passenger freight announcements on the DCS side. All that kind of stuff, it's all there for both systems. Some of the systems like the DCS include different things where you can actually either play music through your train's speakers, you can actually talk through your train's speakers with the remote. So the remote here actually has a little microphone on it where you can actually talk through it like you're doing a 
if you want to talk like an engineer or conductor or something and talk through it and it'll come through the speakers on the actual engine itself. So they have some extra features that Lionel doesn't have. And you know, Lionel has different things that are easy to use like the quillable whistle. The DCS does quillable, but it's a little harder to do. It's a couple of button pushes and everything and not quite as straightforward as the little slider on the legacy remote. So there are differences between the two systems, but Functionally, they do all the same thing, and, and they're just meant to control command engines or uh, conventional engines if you just want to use a remote to uh, alter the track voltage. So it can do all that stuff uh, just like Lionel system can do. The difference is kind of the way it works. So on the TIU, there are four inputs and there's four outputs. And basically what you could do, like on this one right here, you can see there's fixed and variable. There's two of each. And the way they work their system is you have inputs coming in from transformers, whatever it may be. Uh, so you'd have like say four different transformers or bricks powering these individual inputs. And then I could have four different track loops coming out on the other side and I can control them all separately uh, with the remote. And on some of them, if I wanted to, I could use the remote to vary the voltage, just like we were doing before with the earlier TMCC, right? Only this doesn't require an extra box or setup. It's all built into the TIU based on those variable outputs. So on the remote, you pick the track that you want, one, two, three, four. And then when you pick the appropriate one, it can be set to either variable or fixed. And that's how, you know, you would control the train. So let's say it was a variable one you could actually then make that your conventional loop and all conventional trains run on that loop and you could just use the thumb wheel to vary the voltage up and down. If it's a fixed one, then you have 18 volts coming in fixed and 18 volts going out to the track. That could be a command one where you're running all your command engines and things like that. <clears throat> so it has a lot of flexibility. The other thing the system does is it allows you to hook up more than one track interface unit uh, into groups or what they call super TIUs when you set it up where you can have multiple uh, loop outputs. So it really depends on how big your layout is and how how much you need but it is a lot uh, it has a lot of flexibility as controlling all these different outputs. Where on Lionel system there is no such thing. It's just straight uh, you have a signal wire going to the track and what loops that you put it on basically is where the signal is going. So I could technically have four separate loops uh, on a Lionel setup and I would just split the wire four times out to each loop and then each loop would have their own separate transformers controlling it um, and then I'd get the same result. So from both systems you can get the same result. Um, it's just which one you like better. Now the DCS system also has an additional module that you plug into it for Wi-Fi. So like the Lionel system, if you want to use an app, you can. However, it's not Bluetooth. It is a Wi-Fi uh, signal. And so it's a little Wi-Fi module that plugs into a port on the TIU and it has a little antenna and then your phone or tablet connects to that Wi-Fi unit. It's, it's really almost like the Explorer that I showed you before, the DCS Explorer where it's a Wi-Fi from the app going to that and then from there it goes to the track. In this case, it's a Wi-Fi going to the D, uh, TIU and then it sends the signal out to the track for the train. So same kind of feature. However, like I told you earlier, uh, if you get the full system that you're seeing here, then you can actually uh, pay an extra fee for, it's a one-time uh, app fee to upgrade the DCS app and you can actually get the full functionality of DCS in the app as opposed to using the physical handheld remote. They'll both do the same thing. They'll have all the same features. It's just that uh, if you'd rather use your phone or tablet and uh, not this physical remote, uh, you can do that. So it just depends what you like better and you kind of have to play with them to see what you like better. So. The, the DCS system today, if you bought the, the, uh, the latest one, which is the Wi-Fi one, you can see it comes with the TIU. It comes with that little Wi-Fi unit. It's a separate module and then a power supply and then a cable to connect between the two of them. Uh, some of the older uh, DCS systems didn't have the Wi-Fi unit. It was just the TIU and the remote, and that's, that's all you kind of got with it. Um, 
and then we'll talk about the future coming up. But that's the current system right now, and this would give you all full-blown uh, DCS features uh, if you had this system. And so anything on the ProtoSound engines, right, you'd be able to do all the, all the features and everything. And there's a lot of stuff inside the remote in all these menus of things that you can do. Uh, the one thing about the DCS system is you don't have to program anything in like you do on the Lino system. It reads the engine's information and then automatically loads it down when you add the engine to your system. And there's a, there's a series of steps that we're not going to go through on here because that's not the point of this video. Um, but um, this system can do everything that the, you know, the Lionel system can do also. Now, if you remember when I was talking about the Lionel system, I was talking about the uh, layout control system, which actually you can see a couple of the modules right here. And remember, those were additional modules that you added on to the Lionel system so you could do other things like control, uh, you know, power blocks, accessories. Um, there's a Wi-Fi module here, just like the one that would be in there. So when this hooks up to the legacy system in Lionel system, I can control accessories, turn them on and off. Well, guess what? The DCS system has the same type of thing. They don't call it a layout control system. It's not a separate system. Um, it's an additional module, kind of looks a little bit smaller than this, uh, that plugs in here, and it will allow you through the remote, just like Lionel's system, to control accessories. You can see I've got a series of buttons going across here, and one of them is accessories. You got accessory, switch, track. You got kind of the same things that we saw on the legacy remote. So you're getting the full functionality. It just requires to buy an additional module, just like I had to buy additional modules for the layout control system. And then those accessories are wired to those modules and the remote will control the on off through those modules out to the accessories, whatever you're trying to turn on or off or whatever the situation is, okay? So again, it works all kind. Of, it works kind of the same way. Like both systems, the legacy, the current legacy system, and the DCS full functioning system, they they have full functionality and tons of features within them that you can do things with. You know, the question is, which do you like better? Now, the DCS engines have to have a DCS signal going to them. Um, and so you can't take Lionel's system and control a DCS engine. If you want full DCS functionality, you, you must have a DCS system. However, uh, the opposite is not true. The DCS system can, with the appropriate cable hooked up to it, connect to your legacy or TMCC1 systems and control engines through the MTH remote. So I could technically control a Lionel engine through this remote. If I set it up in the correct mode and I have the correct cabling going between the TIU here and the, the Lionel system that we reviewed in our first uh, half of this video. Um, do you want to do that? I don't know. That's a question. You know, everybody has their own uh, sort of uh, opinions on it, but what I'm saying is it's doable and you can do it. Now, it's not full functionality, legacy full functionality. You can run legacy engines and you can run TMCC engines or conventional engines for that matter. They can all be run through the DCS system. The question is, are you getting everything you want? Because there'll be some features of functionality that you may not be able to get. So for instance, as an example, um, there's an engine I have. It's the Air Force One engine uh, that Metka made. And it has a special feature in it that is programmed into the remote and shows up as a button on the LCD screen called Aux 3. And when I press that, it plays uh, Hail to the Chief. Uh, but you have to have that button available for it to trigger that. Um, if you're running that engine through here in TMCC mode or even the basic legacy, that, that feature's not there and I can't trigger it. So it's not 100%, right? Because they're basically mimicking the TMC signal out from the TIU over to Lionel engines. So the question is, do you really want to do that? Or... Uh, do you just have both systems running simultaneously and you can use either or? And that's all possible. You can have both DCS systems and full legacy systems inter 
uh, connected with each other and be able to operate both simultaneously. But um, it does offer that functionality that uh, you can't do from the Lino remote. So I can't really control DCS, en DCS engines from the Lino remote unless I'm just running them conventionally without all their features. So if I was just running a DCS engine uh, without all its advanced features, I could from a regular TMCC Cab 1 or a Legacy Cab 2 because I'm just going to, again, vary the voltage on the track if I'm in those modes. So you can see that all these systems can do all kinds of things and they can uh, sort of interconnect with each other. And it really comes down to what do you want to do? Like on your railroad, is it really important to you that you have one single remote and everything has to be controlled through that? Well, then the DCS system is probably the way you want to go. And you're okay with maybe some features not being there on your Lionel engines. Or are you okay with having two separate remotes? You can still run both trains at the same time you just have to use two separate remotes, one for the one and one for the other. And if you have two people in the room and one is running the one and one is running the other, that's okay, right? That wor that actually works. So it just depends on your, you know, what you're after. Um, if you're trying to run conventional trains, um, sometimes it can be easier with the DCS system because you have that variable output, and all you have to do is switch the track on the remote and now you're at the variable track and then when you use the thumb wheel up and down you're actually just changing the voltage on the track um, or you could have the cab one still on your system hooked up and use that remote when you want to use it and so it's always going to depend on how many loops you have how big your layout is and what you actually need um, I will say that the DCS system if you just if you're going to get into DCS and you know you're going to be, uh, you really like the MTH line of engines, and you're going to be buying more than a couple, I would highly recommend you get the DCS system. Just get the full-blown system, uh, because then you're, you're pretty much set at that point. If you only have a single DCS engine, that's it, and you're not really planning on buying any more DCS engines at all, um, then you might want to just start with the DCS Explorer and test it out with the app. Uh, or the DCS commander that has those nine dedicated buttons and that's it, right, to run your engine. Um, or you could run it just conventionally on your line of layout and not even get a DCS system. So, it, it, you know, it always depends on, as a, as a hobbyist, right, as a buyer, what are you into as far as the actual engines themselves because that will kind of dictate what control systems you need and which is the cleanest. All right, so let's just talk about some of the features that you get if you do the, the full-blown uh, DCS system. So first of all, just like Lionel, you can do up to 99 engines uh, at a time. So that's more than the, the limit of some of the other ones we talked about, right? You do get the wireless handheld remote. Uh, you can have multiple remotes. So if you buy more of the handheld remotes, you can have multiple remotes uh, controlling d engines by different people in the room, right? Um, you do have the regular switch and accessory controls. So if you buy that accessory interface unit, it's called the AIU, uh, then you can control switches and accessories also from the handheld remote if you wanted to. Uh, it also has programmable layout operation. I forgot to mention this on the Lionel system, but they have this also in the legacy system where you can actually record uh, all kinds of layout operations and functions so that the trains can run by themselves and actually have all these commands happen automatically, like switching switches and accessory commands, sounds, direction, speed, all those kind of things. So it has the same type of thing. And that that's actually pretty cool. Uh, I haven't done a video on it, uh, but it is a very cool function where these systems are able to record everything. So you basically what you do is you run the train through a series of uh, commands and those are recorded and then you can run that back anytime you want to run it and it's it's like an automated control system at that point um, obviously you have very precise speed control with these types of things um, now the one difference between Lionel system and the DCS system it is a bi-directional control what does that mean well it basically means that um, you know Lionel system kind of just sends the commands out to the engine whereas the Protostown uh, receives uh, commands back. 
so that it kind of reports back other things into the remote and the system um, when you send signals out. And then it can also record things like one of the nicest features is the chronometer and odometer that tells you how how many how many hours the hour the engine's been run and how many scale miles, right? So that kind of is a nice way to find out how hard the engine's been used. Uh, and that's that's part of that bi-directional communication. Um, the software is upgradable, just like just like Lionel's system, and um, in conventional operation, uh, you can use AC or DC uh, to uh, adjust the track voltage. So um, now the one difference is this one does have a microphone on it, so you can broadcast your uh, voice through Proto Dispatch, is what they call it. Um, it does have a bunch of soft keys, just like the Lionel system does, where it will activate different features based on the engine and things like that. And of course, then um, it also has um, the ability to play music if you wanted to, or something through your engines as it's going around the layout. So uh, those kind of extra features. It's called Protocast, where basically you just take an audio mini cable and you plug it in, and then you can just you know through your phone or iPod or whatever you got, play uh, music through your, or even sounds or voice or whatever you want through your engines. So, and it's everything else that's got the same as the Lionel stuff, emergency stop, you know, crew talk, um, all the normal stuff, brake boost and everything, turning things on and off, volume up and down, headlight on and off, all that kind of stuff. So, um, now, it is a little bit different the way it works. So on Lionel's system, you put an engine on the track, and once it's programmed in, it's ready to go. You just select the engine. On the DCS system, it's a little different. It has to find the engine each time it powers up on the track, and then uh, you may have to move it from inactive to active. And, you know, it's a, it's a little bit different in the way it works. But like I said, the basic functionality and the basic concept is the same between the two systems. Some people swear by DCS, they won't do Lionel and vice versa, everybody's in their own camps, but I find that uh, both systems, having them on your layout is kind of cool. And I like them both. Um, and you can run it different ways. Some people uh, join them together and some people don't. I don't have mine joined together. I actually run one or the other, depending what I'm running at the time. So it's easy, it's clean. I'm gonna talk about those uh, basic setups in a, in a second, but you have to decide, you know, um, how far you want to go into having all these different systems or is there a single system that will do everything you want it to do and maybe you don't need to have all this complicated setup with all these systems trying to join them all together. Guys, here we are. We're at the final uh, MTH uh, control system. This is the system that will be uh, coming. It's not released yet. So it's the new TIU and it's called the WTIU. Uh, and you can see it looks very similar to the one we just showed you, except really what's happening is they've put the uh, separate uh, Wi-Fi unit that used to be separate with a cable and they've embedded it inside the main unit so it's all one unit now with just an antenna on it as you can see right there so that's the main big difference and um, so this will be the sort of latest and greatest DCS system that you'll be able to buy everything that I've showed you so prior to that has all been discontinued uh, and you can only get it on the secondary market right now so just like the Lionel Legacy system, which is astronomical in price right now, the DCS systems are also very high. Now they're not as high, so you can get a, a DCS system for about anywhere from you know six to probably eight hundred right now. Although, one thing you want to keep in mind if you are going to buy a full-blown DCS system is either to wait for this one to come out, or you want to get the Revision L if you do buy an older. Uh, DCS TIU system like I was showing you before. The reason is is because the Revels have a USB port on them instead of the old serial port and so just for things like doing updates it's easier so you don't have to have a serial adapter uh, on your PC um, it, and the Revels also have a better uh, stronger communication and uh, signal. Uh, there were some improvements to them. So it's not like the older Rev, Rev, 
uh, revisions don't work. It's just that um, if you want to get the latest and greatest, the last one is the best one, and that's RevL. And you can tell that if you flip over it on the bottom, it'll have a little sticker that says RevL on it, and that'll be your indication it's a RevL. If it's anything before that, um, you know, it, it probably will work fine, but if you have any issues with signal or things on your layout, I mean, it could be just because it's an older uh, revision that had those issues, and there's really nothing you can do about it except um, live with it and then upgrade when you when you can. So just keep that in mind. Um, I would recommend if you can find a Revision L and you're going to buy a current DCS system that's on the secondary market, uh, go for that one. Um, but this will be the new one. I think its retail price is supposed to be around 350 or something. So obviously this is a much more economical unit to buy if you want to get into DCS. So maybe this is a good reason to just get one of the other units we talked about temporarily until this one comes out and you can um, get the full-blown system. Now, there's a couple caveats with this system. First of all, we've been waiting over a year for it already, and it's been delayed multiple times with no estimated date yet. Same thing as the uh, Base 3 from Lionel. So um, we're waiting for this to actually come out, so we don't know when that's going to be. Uh, the second thing is there will be one change to this from the previous uh, version, and that is the handheld remote will no longer work with this unit uh, through the normal RF frequency. So in other words, you can't uh, also use it like you can use the Legacy with the Base 3. You cannot use the DCS remote with this uh, unless you use a tethered cable. So in other words, they will sell, send, uh, sell a cable that you can actually plug the remote in and then plug that into this new WTIU. Then you can use the remote, but you are going to be tethered. So it's going to be how long ever, ever your cable is and you're going to have a cable. Um, so that that's a little disappointing. I think what happened is maybe, if I had to guess, they uh, took the space up where the uh, RF receiver was for the... Uh, Wi-Fi receiver instead so and they're going the same route as Lionel's going which is they're gonna use the app as the remote and so that way it's customizable and changeable very easily as opposed to a physical handheld remote so but you can still buy the uh, handheld remotes uh, if you get one of the previous the current uh, TIU that's out in the in the wild at train shows and stuff like that and like I said before, that one can have multiple remotes controlling it, so just like the Lionel system can. But this is going to be the latest and greatest one, so this will be sort of the the base, the Lionel Base 3's brother on the MT8 side, right? It'll be the WTIU. Uh, but again, not yet out as of uh, April 1st, 2023. We're still waiting, and uh, we'll see uh, when it finally comes out. But just keep that in mind, if you're not a fan of the app and you're not a fan of being tethered, you probably want to then get the previous system, which is the DCS system uh, revision L. And that's the one you probably want to go for then. All right, guys, now we're going to just do a very high level overview of integration of these two manufacturer systems and how it could work and this diagram comes off MTH's website it's a really nice diagram they have a lot of good information out there so I'd suggest you go out there if you want to see some of this stuff but what they're showing you here is how you can join a DCS and a Lionel system together and in this case they're using the Lionel legacy system but uh, you can see the main core is the TIU we just talked about and it has its inputs and outputs right so inputs, they just have some power supplies coming in, and one of them happens to be a pair of bricks. One is the actual transformer. Whatever the power supply is coming in, uh, it doesn't really matter, just so we're getting power in. And then you can see they have power coming out to four different uh, tracks. At the top here, they've got the WIU, uh, which is the Wi-Fi unit, so that if you wanted to use the app, you could. You can see the little app thing there. Uh, but you could also use the handheld uh, DCS remote if you wanted to on here also because it's going to communicate with the TIU. So a couple different choices there. 
And then down below, they show you how you're sort of joining the Lionel legacy system in with the DCS so that you can control Lionel engines with the DCS system. And as you see, there's the legacy base that we talked about on our first part of our video. There's a cable that goes with that, and they call. And then there's this little uh, Lionel, Lionel layout control module called the SER2. It's it's basically what it does is it creates a serial port that you then use this special cable to connect that uh, serial port to the serial port on the TIU, and that's kind of how it all joins together. And then the TIU can control sort of the entire system. And that's just a quick overview of kind of how it works, but. You can see now that they have everything under control, they can control conventional or command on, you know, depending what track it is and what the input's coming in, and then what they have the individual uh, input set to. So if this one is set to variable control, this one would control, uh, excuse me, down here, variable. Uh, it could control conventional or command, depending how you set the voltage coming into all these different types of things. So. This is one of many ways that you can join all these things together, but that's just one example. Uh, and again, MTH's websites have some great information on how if you wanna hook all these systems together, you can. Or, like I said earlier, you can keep them totally separate and just run each one of them individually. And it will also work that way uh, if I had a person running the DCS stuff with a DCS remote and the Lionel stuff with a legacy remote. That would work also. This, and they can be run simultaneously at the same time on the same track. So um, just keep that in mind. It's very flexible and there's all kinds of ways that you can do it. All right, guys, we're getting close to the end here. Um, we're just going to do uh, two little other little comments. So first thing we want to talk about is you've learned about all the different types of control systems out there and kind of what each control system can do. But what about your engines, right? Because that's the other side of the picture. If we flip it back over to the engine side, what can the engines actually do based on the control system that's controlling it? So that's kind of where you want to start at. So let's look at this engine right here. I, I talked about this in the first part of the video, right? This is the first TMCC uh, controlled engine from Lionel. And if let's say I had this engine on my layout and that's all I had. So what system could I use to control this engine? So what you have to know is what modes can this engine run in? Can this engine run in conventional mode? Can it run in only TMCC mode? Can it run in any other modes, right? And that's really the key to the whole thing, knowing what modes your engine can run into. And a lot of times engines can run in multiple modes. So most engines made today from Lionel and uh, MTH can run in whatever their corresponding command mode is, and they can also usually run in conventional mode. And then sometimes they can run into sub modes. So for instance, I could run a legacy engine in TMCC mode, even though I wouldn't get all the features, but it would still run and I could still make it work. So if that was the case, and I only had a TMCC system at my house, I could actually run that engine. And maybe someday I'd upgrade to legacy, but for now, the engine would qualify to run on my layout because of based on the control system I have and then what modes the engine can actually run in. So that's the really the key to the whole thing uh, when you're uh, picking engines and picking control systems, right? So because I like engines from both MTH and Lionel and I like them from all different eras, you know, I have to have a system that's able to control all those things. Now, Here's the real uh, sort of like piece that, you know, for, from a recommendation standpoint, I would say to everybody that's new out there, you don't necessarily have to buy every single control system and try to join them together. My advice would be to, if you really are the kind of person like I am and you like engines from all different eras, all different manufacturers, and you don't want to be restricted to a single uh, sort of mode, or manufacturer, then go for the latest and greatest systems that they're releasing because the, the reason they are re-releasing all these systems is because they're trying to make systems that can control pretty much everything they've made. So in Lionel's case, it would be the base three. And in MTH cases, it's the new WTIU or even the existing uh, DCS system 
with a WIU on it, either or. And if you have one of those two main systems, it will pretty much control everything you're going to get. And that's what I would suggest for somebody brand new who's jumping in and plans to buy a huge variety of engines from both manufacturers. Having said that, if you are strictly a post-war operator and you really don't have any interest in the modern electronics and that kind of stuff, does that mean you can't buy a new tr engine? Of course not, because like I said, all the modern stuff coming out can run in conventional mode and you'll still get an engine and actually on the DCS side, I, I shouldn't say DCS, on the MTH side, all their modern engines that are uh, command engines uh, run very well in conventional mode. You get sounds and all the stuff and they actually have transformer buttons that you can use in combinations to sort of create some of the DCS commands. So you can still buy new engines if you want to and if you're not interested in all the features, guess what? Your conventional transformer or your TMCC1 system that you're using just to adjust track voltage, that works just fine and you don't need to upgrade to a very expensive complicated system so that's really the the key to the whole thing is what do you like to run what kind of engines and then at the engine level itself what modes can that engine run in now if you bought an in if you're a conventional operator right and you bought an engine that was a type of engine that could only run in a certain mode and it wasn't conventional didn't have that mode then that would be uh, something you wouldn't want to buy because it doesn't run on your layout right so, you know, it really just depends what it is. Uh, and that's all I'm going to say about that. So you got to just take a look at uh, what you're buying and then uh, what systems you want to match up with it. I will say that, you know, we all started with some control system to start with, whatever it was. And as the systems advanced, a lot of us would upgrade and buy the latest system. Me personally, I do one of two things usually I just either put the old system in a box in a closet or sometimes I'll sell it because there are people that still want the older systems and I'll stick with the new stuff because it can control everything from that point backwards but there's a lot of people that they don't like to um, have things that they purchase to sit in closets or they don't want to sell it for whatever reason and then they join all these systems together as I said you can do all that it makes it more complicated Obviously, I like simple streamlined things. So for me, I'm going to be honest with you, the base three is going to be it for the Lionel system for me. It's going to control all my stuff and I can use my legacy remotes with it. So I'm happy. That's all I need. And then on the MTH side, I have the DCS system now with uh, WIU um, for the Wi-Fi. So I can control my MTH engines with the remote or the app. So I'm set on that side too. Uh, so I don't really need to go further than that. I could get the WTIU, but then I would lose the remote functionality with the handheld. So for me, uh, as far as the MTH system goes, the DCS system I have now it fits the bill for everything that they are releasing currently. And I'm not expecting any new super features or functionality coming out for DCS at this point because, you know, that group has separated from the main uh, MTH uh, company when the, it all got split up. So at this point, uh, you know, MTH is just re-releasing or re-running engines that they have tooling for. But I'm not expecting any, any new features or any new types of toolings to come out. So we're probably not going to see anything new for DCS as far as functions. So the current uh, RevL DCS system is perfectly fine. Uh, but yes, I hope that uh, some of this information will help you make an uh, informed decision on you know which system you need to run the models that you have and that you're buying and collecting. All right, guys, we finally reached the end, believe it or not. So a lot of information I know, and I'm sure there's something I missed along the lines. But what I was trying to do with this video is just give everybody sort of a high level View of all the different systems that are out there with their naming convention so you can kind of make uh, heads or tails of all this stuff that's going on out there and you know what would be good for your particular layout or what you need in your particular uh, system so I mean we've got 
DCS, we've got Legacy, we've got TMCC, we got all those names that we were tossing around. And honestly, um, all of them are great systems and they all kind of work in different ways. So uh, hopefully this video was helpful and help you to sort of weed through all this information and you get a better idea of how all these systems work and then you can make an informed decision on what you need on your layout. So um, it was a lot of work, a lot of fun uh, making this video. I certainly hope it helps everybody. You can certainly put your comments down below um, if you uh, think of something else that needs to be added to it. Um, I will say it's a little hard to edit these videos once they're posted on YouTube because you have to delete them and uh, repost them all over again. But um, if there's some major omission, I'm sure I can add it in there if needed. But again, this was not meant to be into super detail. It was just meant to give an overview of all these systems in terms of everybody could figure out what was going on. So when you're out there and you're trying to buy something, you kind of know what you're doing. So hopefully it helped everybody. Uh, as always, make sure you subscribe. Hit the like button if you like this video. Uh, hit the bell for notifications. And I will see you guys next time. Peace, guys.